and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for our next segment of our Core Set 2020 Standard Set Review. Sorry, we'll be focusing on Standard here. We're going to our next color, which is going to be black. We have done white and blue so far. As you can see up here, we've had the order. Um, so if you haven't watched those videos yet on YouTube, hope you click on over there. Um, we're going to be grading each card on its playability in standard based on an, uh, like the U.S. Uh, school system grading scale of A through F. Uh, if you want to know all about the that grading scale, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can click the uh, go to the, the description below, click the link there, and you can also find the spreadsheet of all of our grades that, that we have given there as well. If you're watching this, of course, here in chat, you can do exclamation point grade to get you there. Uh, but I read through the, the grade scale on whenever we covered white, and so I won't go ahead and, and re repeat it each and every time. So um, yeah, let's just kind of go on here and go to our third color, which is going to be black. All right, our first card is Agonizing Siphon, three and a black sorcery. Agonizing Siphon deals three damage to any target and you gain three life. So we got Creeping Chill that can deal damage to any target instead of just upstairs. Uh, but of course, doesn't have the cool Creeping Chill stuff. Yeah, four mana. We got a lot of good removal in black these days. Uh, that For four mana, we are not going to be playing Agonizing uh, siphon, so this is going to be the limited rating. So cards that aren't going to see any play in standard, I uh, give it an F if it's a rare or a mythic, or if it's just a common or uncommon, we just give it the limited rating. So um, for Bol, I guess Bolus is Citadel, you could play it, but I mean you're just going to be playing, you're just going to want to be playing Vrasis Contempts, though that gain one less life and it's just a whole lot better card. All right, Audacious Thief. I guess if you're if you're a black red burn deck, no, audacious thief two and a black two two. Whenever a audacious thief attacks, you draw a card and lose a life. Like if it was just you know enter the battlefield, draw a card, lose a life, you know I'm kind of in there. Like that's that's not so bad for three mana two two draw you know ETB draw a card, lose a life. But the fact that you have to attack with it. Um, uh, you know, like that's that's kind of tough, and you're like attacking with two twos. Like a, a two two is is a creature that's gonna mostly always get blocked and get killed. Also, now nah, it's just another limited card. Looks like that's what we're starting off with here on blacks. So our first few cards are gonna be getting our limited rating. Okay, so is Barony Vampire a three mana three two? We're not we're not playing this in standard. So let's just get that on the limited rating. Let's go to our next card. Blade Brand, two mana instant target creature gains death touch until end of turn, draw a card. I definitely feel like I just reviewed this card in one of the Ravnica sets not too long ago. And that definitely has the art of Ravnica set, the Rakdos art. So yeah, this is a Ravnica Allegiance card. So <clears throat> I'm sure I talked a whole lot more about the card in the Ravnica Allegiance set review, but this doesn't see any play in standard and I don't think that's going to change. So another limited card. Blight Beetle, one in a black, one, one protection from green creatures. Your opponent's control can't have one, one counters put on them. Okay. Now we're, now we're getting somewhere. This is a card that could see some standard play. So this obviously of course is very good against the explore package. Right. <clears throat> oh, and yeah, and Nissa. Yeah, this is a good Nissa hate card too. Ooh, I like me some Nissa hate cards because a lot of this set seems like it's it's not so great against Nissa. So I like me some some cards that are Nissa hate cards. Um, it doesn't stop Nissa. No, it doesn't. It still gets the counter. It gets the counters while it's still a land. No. So it doesn't actually stop Nessa. No, Hawkeye, no. Oh, well. Uh, so, huh. Krasis, I, it does stop Krasis, right? Because that's a creature that puts counters on it. Okay, yeah, so it works against Explorer, works against Krasis, and it also just blocks. So, like, big green creatures, it can sit there and block all day. 
Now, the one problem with sitting and wanting to block green creatures for a while is we have a new Vivian in the, the set that's going to be giving green creatures trample. So having a 1-1 to be able to sit there and block your Null Hide Feroxes and your Gruel Spellbreakers that already has trample and whatever other green creatures, that's not ideal. This is kind of a kind of a cyborg card against Explore Package and Crisis. I think that's what we're really looking at here. Um, I think that's yeah. I think that's what we're looking at. So as far as grading scale goes, um, a D is a card that's a or let's see, a C is a card that's a fringe cyborg card, um, and that's that's probably where we're looking at here, a fringe cyborg card, but maybe even lower because it's it's really just for like one one deck kind of thing. And it's not even like that great. I don't know if you'd rather just have a removal spell kind of thing. So we'll go with like C minus for our, our fringe sideboard card here. All right, Blood Burglar, one in a black, two, two, as long as it's your turn. It has lifelink. Do we need a two mana vampire that can have lifelink? I don't think so. Don't, don't think we really need that. So, um, yeah. I think this is just going to get our limited rating here. Yeah, Blight Beetle does stop proliferate decks. If, if proliferate decks become a thing, that would stop that. Um, yeah, so that's an L. Blood for Bones. So not the best start for, for Black so far. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Blight Beetle does stop a mass. Yes, that would stop a mass. Yep. Blood for Bone says three and a black sorcery um, as an additional cost to cast the spell, sacrifice a creature. So you have to spend four mana for a sorcery and you have to sacrifice a creature. So what do we get for that? Return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, then return another creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Well, that's a pretty powerful effect. So you get the reanimate effects of returning creatures from the graveyard to the battlefield usually cost five mana in standard. Um, so it does only, only cost four for that powerful effect. And you also get to, to raise dead, returning a creature from your graveyard to your hand. That's pretty good too. Um, but of course you do need to sacrifice a creature for that. Hmm. Is this better than concoct? Yeah. Cause concoct at, at, you know, is that five mana to do that? You get to surveil three and then return at five mana. This isn't so bad. I don't. I think this is like a very fringe kind of card. Um, but you know, if you're playing, if you're, you know, you'd have to be playing. You'd probably want to be playing. Sorry, not have to, but you'd probably want to be playing a like a, a green black uh, deck that you're you're a self milling deck with uh, Stitcher Supplier and um, I don't know, the three one that that mills yourself. And you know, you're you're a self milling deck, and you you can just sacrifice Stitcher Supplier. Um, or anything like that, and maybe you're getting back, yeah, like you're putting like Lot with Giant into play. If you're like a, you know, if you're a, a big time self mill deck, um, also of course just the, uh, man, I am not thinking of names right now. Um, the nine mana card that you know caught the seven green black that cost seven. It costs one less for every creature you have. Just putting that thing that also returns a land into play. Um, putting that back into play is pretty nice. Could be with it like an Orzhov Sacrifice deck, maybe. You could see something there. You'd have to like want to have like pretty good creatures, to, like pretty good sized creatures to return from the graveyard to the battlefield kind of thing. Um but yeah, honestly, I could see Blood for Bones seeing some play. It has like has some pretty good value. Uh, I think it works well with like the the green, uh, um, Cavalier. That's what these things are called. The green Cavalier. It works pretty well with. Also, uh, and yeah, you can return the thing that you sacrifice. So yeah, any creature with an enter the battlefield effect, you can just sacrifice some creature and then return it back you know like um ravenous chupacabra you're good to go there um 
Yeah, because you because you can right because it's additional cost to, to cast the spell. You have to sacrifice. Do you have to target? No, because it just says, says return a creature card. It doesn't doesn't say it targets. So I don't think you have. I don't. Yeah, I think you can just return the things you sacrifice. That's what it seems like. Because yeah, you don't you don't need to target as part of like you know before it, it resolves. It's not saying return target things. So it's just after it resolves, then you get to choose. Um, so no, if you if you did have to target, you have to like choose your targets to put the the card onto the stack also. So you wouldn't be able to sacrifice and and target the thing that you sacrifice. Because you don't, you'd have to do those. You'd have to put the card onto the stack. Um, but yeah, so this is a decent card. Good. See the scene a little bit of play somewhere. See putting this in a deck somewhere. Let's go with a D here for Blood for Bones. It's not just an F, but yeah, there's some things to do with this card. Yeah, Masker Girl. All right, there's some things to do with this card. All right, Blood Soaked Altar. Four black, black artifact. Tap, pay two life, and discard a card, and sacrifice a creature to make a 5 5 black demon creature token with flying. That is not good for standard. Limited, maybe you, you know, discard an extra land and sack some crappy creature and make a 5 5, and like that thing wins in limited, maybe. This is not a card for standard, though. I guess, yeah, I guess if you want to put this in a Liliana's contract deck that you need four demons to win the game. Don't you need, like, four demons with different names, though? But, yeah, and you can only do it sorcery speed. Yeah. All right, we have Bloodthirsty Aerialist. Um, one... BB for a 2-3 flyer. Whenever you gain life, put a counter on Bloodthirsty Aerialist. So this could go in, you know, a very fringe deck, not like a tier one deck or anything. But if you want to put this in your Johnny's Pride Mate deck, if you want to make it black, white, life gain, uh, this is just like more a Johnny's Pride Mates. Every time you gain life, put a counter on on it. But it also has you know has flying, so it has evasion. The black black in the mana cost is a little rough because usually that's a, a more white heavy deck that's kind of splashing black a little bit more. So like that mana cost is a little rough for that kind of deck. But you do get a, a flying a Johnny's Pride Mate here. Gideon's Company. As what is what is I don't I actually don't know what that card is, Gideon's Company. I honestly don't know what that card is. Was that a white card? Did we talk about that one? No. All right, three and a white creature, human soldier, three, three. Whenever you gain life, put two one, one counters on Gideon's company. So it's, it's in a Johnny's pride mate for four mana that gets two one, one counters. I mean, you can make a big creature, but four mana for that with no no trample, no nothing. But you do get to make a big creature for that, so. Hmm. Don't love it. So, Bloodthirsty Aerialist, uh, anyway, I think we're going to go with a D here. For, like, a, a card that maybe... Uh, you know, like a, a card that you'll sometimes see in standard, but it's kind of underpowered. That seems like a bloodthirsty aerialist. All right, we got Bone Splinters, one mana sorcery as an additional cost, sacrifice a creature, and then destroy target creature. Isn't this card already in standard with destroy a creature or a planeswalker? Yeah, or you can just, yeah. So like there's there's that other card in standard that doesn't really see play. Spark Harvest, yeah, that destroy a creature or a Planeswalker, and you can also just pay four mana to cast Spark Harvest also, where this one just always costs one mana. So I think this is kind of... I don't think this is a standard card either, so we're just giving this one the limited rating there with an L. Uh, Bone Clad Necromancer, 3BB, 3-3. Three, three. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you may exile target creature card from a graveyard if you do create a 2-2. Two, two. 
So for five mana, you get a three, three and a two, two and get rid of some creature from a graveyard. I mean, it's not too bad, but like the stuff that we get to be doing at five mana and standard is really, really good. And I don't, I don't think bone clad necromancer is getting us there, but we're going to go with the limited rating again. Yeah, they really have a ton of things against us at Phoenix <laughs> these days. All right, um, Cavalier of Night. All right, our Black Cavalier. So two BBB for a 4-5 lifelink. Whenever Cavalier of Night enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature when you do destroy target creature and opponent controls. Whenever Cavalier of Cavalier of Night dies, return target creature card with CMC three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Hmm. I don't know. These Cavaliers, they're good. But how, how much play are we actually doing with this? All right, so we could have Ravenous Chupacabra comes in as a four mana 2-2 two, two that destroys a creature. That card's pretty solid. So this, we have to add another black to the mana cost. So you have to have three black mana. And then whenever it enters, you have to sacrifice a different creature just to get the Chupacabra trigger. You know, it's not just chupacabra in itself. I feel like this card could just be Chupacabra kind of like on its own kind of thing for being a, a, a mythic instead of an uncommon kind of thing. And then, yeah, you get to bring back creatures that cost CMC three or less whenever it dies. Um, yeah. Orzhov Knights, yeah, that, that's where I could see definitely see this in the top end of a knight deck. But the problem with this in, in Orzhov Knights deck is Orzhov Knights, you're going to want to be like History of Benalia that's white, white on turn three. And then this thing costs black, black, black. So that's kind of rough there. But bringing back like Midnight Reaper is a really good three CMC car, card to bring back a creature there. Uh, Play Crafter is another pretty good one. Um, if you're playing against a bunch of little one ones, I guess you could have like Plague Mare as something. Um, you know, uh, Resplendent Angel, uh, you know, two drops. There's, there's, you know, a bunch of different like two drops you could be bringing back. Um, but that's kind of like the, the things that I was thinking about there. Um, but yeah, this kind of seems like a lot. You have to sacrifice another creature. So like, would this be a better top end than God Eternal Bantu in an Orzov aristocrat style deck? that's like playing cruel celebrant and there's the new black white creature that um that we'll get to that's a multicolor creature um oh i'd have to go to the very top to to click to, to the bot to go to the bottom but there's a multicolor creature that whenever a creature enters each opponent loses a life i believe that's that's the exact wording i don't think you gain a life but you know this can have more creatures enter and have them lose life is this better than than god eternal bantu in that that kind of deck for a top end card, I'm not sure. Prob I don't know. I don't know. Um, Cause yeah, Bantu gets to you know cycle a good amount and everything. I, f I feel like this should just have. It, this shouldn't need to sacrifice another creature whenever it enters. That's that's a pretty pretty big clause of like having to sacrifice another creature just to destroy. <laughs> target creature i feel like it could just etb destroy target creature and opponent controls honestly you're think if y'all are thinking this is much worse than bantu because bantu is it is okay but it's not even incredible there i don't i don't think like because ravenous chupacabra is an uncommon at four with that ability as a two two making it a mythic making it cost another black mana giving it that same ability making it a four or five lifelink with the other ability too that seems like that's what a mythic would be i don't think that would be way too strong honestly um, but with that sacrifice another creature i'm not really that uh into this i guess against aggro this is very good a four or five life linker against aggro so even even in like a sideboard card for knights this is a very good sideboard card that is true but in the knight decker you're gonna want to play this over lyra dombringer against aggro where you know lyra dombringer five five first strike life linker that's easier to cast if you're playing black white knights like 
where does this actually fit in? Yeah, maybe after Lyra rotates out. I'm I'm gonna just go with a D here for this card. A card that you'll sometimes see play in standard, but it's kind of underpowered. Like it, this is this is a disappointing mythic in my eyes. Yeah, it's not it's not that like this is really that bad, but like standard has great cards at five mana. Um, you know, you we have like Doom Whisper cost five mana. It's like are we playing like I don't know like you have to be really good. At the, for a five mana creature to see play, and so for a cavalier that's you know black 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 and is a mythic rare, this one's disappointing, to be honest. Okay, uh, we have disfigure, uh, black for an instant target creature gets minus two minus two until end of turn. This card is very strong, definitely like this. Like y'all know how good shock is. Is this as good as shock? No, but this is kind of black's version of shock one mana is really really crucial to be able to kill things right away like one mana like lets you double spell on like turn three with like that this and a two drop kind of thing um it's just very versatile uh you can use it in combat to like shrink some bigger creature that you're blocking or that the blocked your your creature if you're like being more aggressive you're attacking with things they block with something you give their creature minus two minus two just very versatile card only costs one mana. Um, great, great card here. Um, yeah, very, very, very good card. Um, I think this is more like a. I think this is like a B, a role player that sees play among multiple decks, kind of like a Paradise Druid type thing. I think that's where we're getting our Dovin or Disfigure. I think this is like a role player for a lot of decks. I think control decks can play it. Uh, I think this is just a good solid role player in lots of decks. The, this is a. I think this is kind of a definition of a B. Very good card there. Dread Presence. Three and a black, three, three. Whenever a swamp enters the, the battlefield under your control, you choose one. You either draw a card and lose a life, or you deal two damage to any target and gain two life. Wow. And that, that second part, I am interested in that. So you play this, and then you immediately play a swamp. You get to do two damage to any target, gain two life. Like, that's... As we, as we see, if dealing three and gaining three is worth four mana, dealing two, gaining two has got to be worth, you know, that's probably worth like three mana. Like that's better than, I don't know, is that worth like two, two three mana? Like that's, that's a really good effect. Um, plus you also get to just choose, hey, would you rather draw a card and lose a life? You get to choose that also. Like that's, that's not a bad option. Um, yeah, so you can go scape shift with this. Um, yeah, scape shift, <laughs> scape shift in a bunch of swamps. You, yeah, you can do that. That's for sure. Um, yeah, play additional land. So like wayward sword tooth, then you play additional lands, kind of thing. Um, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna want to be able to play a lot of swamps. Like maybe are you like going with like sword tooth crucible? uh evolving wilds field of ruin like there's just like some cool things you could kind of be doing with this card or you know just kind of playing it straight up in like a mono black or very black heavy deck with a lot of swamps kind of thing um yeah uh yeah it's got huge utility here um is this like gonna be a top tier standard deck like this plus scape shift or just kind of this with other things no no, but this is this is a card that you can build around for some fringe archetypes. This is this is the kind of card that's definitely powerful enough to win games, uh, kind of thing. But it's not it's not going to be uh, something that's going to be a big part of the meta game. It's not something like that. Um, yeah, it could be like a Rakdos burn kind of card. Yeah, but it's it's a sweet one. We'll I'll be uh, playing. I'll be building around this one here. So a powerful card that sees play in a fringe deck, in fringe decks, that's, that seems like uh, some dread presence here. Maybe not like, yeah, so that, that seems like a C. Uh, maybe maybe a little bit lower, because it does, you know, it is, it's not just whenever en any land enters, it's any swamp, and so, you know, it does also narrow its uh, purpose down, and of course it's not a very big body that's not going into play too much. Um, I think this is better than Twilight Prophet because 
Twilight Prophet, you can't really this I think this is a good amount better than Twilight Prophet. So Twilight Prophet, you know, you're just playing a flyer that only if you ascend then you get something. But and you can and you only get that until your next turn. This you can get the thing immediately. Like you can you can wait till turn five and you can play this and then play a swamp and you immediately deal two damage to any target and gain two life or you draw another card you get you can get uh your effect immediately here with dread presence um so i definitely think this is better than twilight prophet because that's that's really important um but then yeah it has huge upside whenever if it stays out and everything so let's go c minus there for dread presence all right duress uh says um you know Dress, we all know Dress, right? Dress is just a very common sideboard card. It's a great one. It's a B. Very common sideboard card. It's awesome. All right, Embodiment of Agonies. One black black for a zero zero. Flying Death Touch. Embodiment of Agonies enters the battlefield with a one one counter on it for each different mana cost among non land cards in your graveyard. It's a weird card. So you're going to want your graveyard to be, you're going to need to be self-milling to be able to play this card. And then, yeah, you can have a lot of different mana costs in your graveyard. Now, a land doesn't have a mana cost. So I don't think you get like zero, you know, like if you mill over a land, I don't think that's counting towards anything kind of thing. <clears throat> so yeah, so three cards in the graveyard with, with different mana costs would make this a 3-3 three, three flyer kind of thing um what does the hybrid cost count as two different costs does the hybrid cost no no hybrid cost counts as just like one cost of like two hybrid hybrid kind of thing um and oh yeah it does say among non-land cards in the graveyard anyway so yeah it, it says the word non-land on there anyway so not really that great for aggro, but I mean, if you, you know, if we're Golgari self mill, uh, this can be a very big flying death touch in a Golgari self mill. Like, let's say you have like uh, black and then uh, for like mana cost, like Stitcher Supplier, then you have like your black green card, your one in a green card, uh, you know, uh, your one in a black, uh, then, you know, your one green green, you know, you have this card, this one black black. You have like your two black blacks. Um, you have like your really big uh, creature that we talked about earlier, like the seven green black. You have like find finality that's like green green black black kind of thing. Like you can have a lot of different mana costs. Like this could this could be a three mana five five six six seven seven without that much work. Um, no, if you no you, when you. No, if you have M M19 Duress in your arena account, you do not need M20 Duress. Uh, after rotation, you're good to go. Like any any Duress works. Um, so is does this actually still fit in the deck? I don't know. You know, I'm just I'm just kind of spitballing like ways that we can make this work, kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, Demir self mill with Narcomiva creeping, crippling chill. Um, maybe um, don't you think embodiment of agonies is great and mardu with kalia oh yeah i guess i i don't i don't remember exactly what kalia does so yeah if kalia like cares about demons and everything maybe this this could work there of something that that does something good with with uh demons i guess we'll we'll kind of get to that whenever whenever we get to kalia um if the demon subtype matters so this could see some some French play in some different decks. Let's go with a D here. We could maybe get maybe put this together in some French decks here. Maybe D plus. D plus. Okay. Graveyard Hate is very strong in standard too, especially with this set with the black ley line that we'll get to here in a little bit. Um, 
yeah, maybe just a mid-range deck playing removal, hand disruption. You just have to play this later on. It's like a three drop that you don't really want to play on turn three kind of thing. Because it doesn't get bigger for whenever you put other things in. It It's a one-time thing. It, it enters the battlefield that one time with those 1-1 one, one counters. So it's not going to get bigger over time. So you're going to want to play it in the late game. Uh, Epicure of Blood. Five mana, four, four. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. This is F. This is in standard right now. Hey, JMS, with that Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much for working through there, figuring that out. Thanks for that sub there, JMS. I appreciate that. Fathom Fleet Cutthroat is another F. Whenever it enters the battlefield, destroy target creature and opponent controls that was dealt damage this turn. Or sorry, uh, not F, but L for limited. Because these are commons. Like, these are commons that aren't made for standard. So they get the limited rating. These are both already in standard. Those are just limited cards. <clears throat> Feral Abomination, 6 mana, 5-5 five, five, Death Touch. That's getting an L for limited as well. Looks like black has a lot of fillers here. Gorging Vulture, 3 mana, 2-2 two, two Flyer. When Gorging Vulture enters the battlefield, put the top 4 cards of your library into your graveyard. You gain 1 life for each creature card put into your graveyard this way. Well, if you need to self-mill, this can help get it done. But a 3 mana 2-2 two, two flyer is not a very good body, even though you can gain a little bit of life. I don't think this is better than the current options we have for self-milling. But if you really want to go crazy with self-mill, you can get this in there. But I'm just going to go ahead and go with L for a limited rating also. Gravedigger is another reprint that is currently in standard right now and doesn't see any play. Uh, four mana, two, two. When it enters the battlefield, you can return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So let's go with the limited rating here. Gravedigger is a classic, though. Gruesome Scourger. I don't really know how to like pronounce these, like Scourge or Scourge. I don't know. Scourger? I think it's probably Scourger. That's probably it. Three, black, black, three, three. When Gruesome Scourger enters the battlefield, it deals damage to target opponent or planeswalker equal to the number of creatures you control. It wasn't a five mana, three, three. But, you know, it does have a, a kind of a cool ETB effect, but we're not, we're not playing this over other good five mana cards in standard these days. I guess it is a okay. Okay, so this is a a dread horde, uh, command the dread horde wombo combo. You try to like have command the dread horde with a bunch of creatures that make tokens and everything, and you you get this back. It's kind of like the the different. It's like different than lot with giant that would deal the damage equal to the creatures in the graveyard. Yeah, just can't have your grave merchant. Okay, so it is Scourger, like Burger, Gruesome Scourger. Okay. All right, here, we got a couple of rares coming up here. Let's check out this one. Knight of Ebon Legion, the Ebon Legion. Knight of the Ebon Legion. It's a vampire knight. Very good, very good creature types here. Vampires, knights, very good creature type for a one mana, one, two. Three mana, Knight of the Ebon Legion gets plus three, plus three, and gains death touch until end of turn. All right, so you can pump it to be a four, five death touch, which that's a really good ability because you get to attack in with your one, two into other creatures, and you get to be like, hey, do you want to, do you, you know, you attack into like a three, three into a four, four, and you just get to be like, do you want to block? All right, if they do, you just spend your three mana and, you know, basically have murder for their opponent, you know, three mana destroy target creature if they block. Because you turn this into a 4-5, it's too big. If they don't block, you're like, cool, I'll play my other thing second main. And then at the beginning of your end step, if a player lost four life, four more life this turn, put a 1-1 counter on Knight of the Ebon Legion. Well, that's pretty cool also. Speaking of vampires, yeah, that works really well with the Danto Vanguard. I just really, I, you know, this is my first time really reading this card. Because it says, if a player lost four or more life this turn. So a Danto Vanguard, you you pay your four life to make it indestructible. 
you know, put a counter on your knight at the beginning of your end step. So yeah, so good card for vampires, good card for knights. This is just a good one drop. And, you know, good one drops, those are rare in standard these days. So standard could definitely use a good one, you know, like be able to pair this with gutter bones. You got two good black one drops. Um, yeah, good card, good card. Yeah, it's not legendary. Run, run the full four, here. A um, lot of, a lot of good things that this card has going for it. Um, so where are we going? So we're going with a B, a role player that can see play among multiple decks. Like a, like a, like a Paradise Druid kind of card. I think that's where we're kind of going with this rating here. So this is a solid card. Let's go with the B. I'm, I'm liking this card. The Knight of the Eben Legion. Eben? Maybe it's Eben. I guess I'm going to have to figure out how to pronounce that. Um, yeah, it gets buffed by History of Benalia because the Knights and everything. Good aggro card, yeah. And it's really, really hard to block. Because a 4-5 Death Touch is very hard to block. Yeah, this is a solid card. I like it. It's Eben? Okay. Y'all are saying it's Eben? Like Ebony? All right. Knight of the Eben Legion. Speaking of the Legion, it looks like the Legion's ended, though. Man, that, that knight didn't do a very good job. Uh, that was that was really fast. I was all excited about this Ebon Legion, and now suddenly the Legion's ended. Wow. Well, that's that's a plot twist right there. All right. Ep, uh, Legion's end. One in a black sorcery. Exile target creature and opponent controls with CMC two or less and all other creatures that player controls with the same name as that creature. Then that player reveals their hand and exiles all cards with that name from their hand and their graveyard. So it doesn't go through the library. So it's only hand and graveyard in the battlefield. So yeah, if we're talking about like Hydroid Crisis as like your card here, you get to exile all the other Hydroid Crisises in play in the hand and in the graveyard but not from the library they could still top deck another crisis for example but like so like are we playing this card hero precinct one it doesn't work with phoenix it's cmc two or less it doesn't work with phoenix um it is good against like tokens. Yeah, hero precinct one that makes a bunch of tokens or something. You can get rid of all the tokens or get rid of the hero. Uh, yeah, Krasis, Wild Growth Walker, Mana Creatures, Steamkin. Steamkin was the one I was thinking of. Oh, Growth Chamber Guardian. That's a good one. Growth Chamber Guardian's a good one there too. So yeah, this is definitely a sideboard card like against aggro. You know, against like your mono whites, your mono reds. You can bring this in. Bring this in against Wild Growth Walker. Uh, also, Wild Growth Walker and Krasis also. So I think it's kind of a sideboard card for those kind of matchups. Um, Cause it does just, cause it exiles and exiles all of them. And so like exiling like all the wild growth walkers from their graveyard from in play and everything, that's really nice against these command the dread horde decks. You're like, no, get rid of your wild growth walkers. They're done, get out of here. So that's a good sideboard card that also, yeah, works against Steamkin and everything. Um, yeah, we said that. Yeah, the um, Growth Chamber Guardian. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, it seems like a pretty good sideboard card. How does this How does this work with Basic Forest? So, like, Nyssa ticks up on Basic Forest to make it a 3-3, and they tick up on another Basic Forest to make it a 3-3. The CMC is zero, so it would exile all creatures with they control with that have that name. And then they reveal their hand and exile all cards with that name. So they reveal they would exile they would exile all forests from their hand and from their graveyard. So they'd get both forests plus every forest in their hand. Because yeah, it would only get the it would not get every forest on the battlefield. Only the forests that are creatures, because it says exile 
all other creatures that player controls with a name, but then then that player reveals their hand and exiles all cards with that name. So like if they have extra, you know, if they're like a mono green Nissa deck, yeah, you got some extra forest in your hand, exile all those. Yeah, versus mono green Tron or something. I know, for, I know force and hands are not creatures, but it says then that player reveals their hand and exiles all cards with that name from their hand. So it doesn't say all creatures from their, from their with that name from their hand. So all cards. And their graveyards. I don't know if you need to get like the forest out of their graveyard or whatever, but still. Huh. That's kind of a cool thing there. All right, so... This is definitely a pretty good sideboard card. Is it a very common sideboard card, like a B, like a Dovin's Veto? Maybe not. Is it a fringe sideboard card? Probably better than that. Probably between those two. Let's go with like B minus. I think it's a close to a very common sideboard card. I think that would be a pretty good sideboard card, especially for the format right now with, um, uh, with Wild Growth Walker. I think that's a, a really good card against Wild Growth Walker. So yeah, I think it's right there between uh, B minus and C plus. All right, Leyline of the Void. I think we all know what Leyline of the Void does by now. Um, I guess all these Leylines have X marks the spot uh, art this time. So yeah, 2BB enchantment. If it's in your opening hand, you begin with it on the battlefield because it's a ley line. And then if a card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, you exile it instead. So if there's a, a you know real graveyard heavy deck, you're gonna want your ley line of the voids. Uh, you know, command against command the dread horde, get your ley line of the voids, exile their whole graveyard. Now, so thing some things about this against command the dread horde, they do get to still get your graveyard, so they can still take all the stuff from your graveyard. And, you know, that's also assuming they don't have, like, they're not playing a Teferi Command the Dreadhorde deck that also just got rid of your Ley Line and then put then had other things in the graveyard. Um, also, it doesn't exile the current graveyard. So, like, if you don't start the game with this, if you draw this Ley Line later on in the game and you play it, it doesn't do anything until, until future cards are put into the graveyard. Because it does say, you know, it's, so it's not, it's not exile all graveyards first and then that. And it only affects the opponent's graveyard. Um, so it do, this doesn't really work against Drake's. Crackling Drake counts exile also. It doesn't count just graveyard. So it would stop and it stops Enigma Drake, but not Crackling Drake kind of thing. So are we really playing this card too much? I don't know. I don't know. It does if you're playing like a removal heavy deck with this kind of card. It does turn all of your creature removal into exile removal. You know, like if, so like if they're playing Rekindling Phoenixes and stuff like that, they're not getting it back or anything like that. You know, like if you, uh, you know, you play an Angrass Rampage, tell them to sacrifice a creature. Well, no, they have to exile a creature now when you have your Ley Line of the Void in play and so on. All your removal spells get kind of upgraded here. This kind of feels like this is a card that's more for, again, if they were thinking about the, um, the new format called historic coming up if they were going to be adding back in past sets if we we're going to be getting like uh shadows over an estrad into standard that has delirium uh you know with emrakul and they wanted like something in standard that helps stop emrakul and delirium that's where i was that's where i'm kind of thinking with the ley line of the void whenever i saw it at first it doesn't seem like you really need it too much in standard the big thing in standard i guess is probably the arc light phoenix of course um but yeah, Graf Digger's Cage. I, I'm liking Graf Digger's Cage more these days with with the enchantments that are like casting stuff off the top of your library. So many of those kind of cards. Yeah, Silent Gravestone does a better job against Dread Dread Horde. It does. Um. So this kind of seems like a fringe sideboard card. So I'm thinking this is like a C. This. Yeah, I think it's like a C, like a fringe sideboard card here. All right, we got Mind Rot up next. Target play three mana. Target player discards two cards. This is just an L. This is a limited card. Um, it looks like I don't have this on my set review for some reason, but oh well, we're just gonna pass over that one. That's just a limited card. Murder, 
destroy target creature. Well, like murder is in standard now, right? It doesn't see play. If removal gets worse and you need this, I have, I have like, I mean, I have registered murder for a tournament before, for a standard tournament before. Definitely good for Popper. That is true. Definitely good there. Um, you know, D minus for murder. A little bit better than just a limited card. Um, I don't have I don't have the link to this site here. This is just the Wizards website uh, with the card image. Just Google search Corset 2020 card uh, card image preview Wizards MTG something like that. You'll find it from the Wizard site. All right, Noxious Grasp, one in a black, instant, destroy target creature or planeswalker that's green or white, and you gain a life. This is a pretty good looking card here. There's a lot of good white planeswalkers with the Teferis, most notably. And then like your Ajani's, your Sorens, like that kind of stuff. Um, Gideon, if that starts seeing some play. Or any creature that's green. Or any creature that's white. A lot of good white creatures also. Green creatures. Oh yeah, green planeswalkers too. Your Nissas, your Tamios. This is maybe the best one of these cards that we've seen so far. I think this is better than the white or the blue one. This hits a lot of stuff. This seems like a... So I'm thinking this is going to be a common... A uh, very common sideboard card. Yeah, this seems like a very common sideboard card kind of thing. This is a card that we're going to have to... That may kind of... Honestly, this is the kind of card that could warp the format a little bit. Make you want to play like creatures and planeswalkers that aren't green or white kind of thing. And yet, it has the life gain synergy. Also, for the black-white life gain stuff. Yeah, just gain a life. Why not? Um, correct. You cannot kill Gideon on your opponent's turn. Correct. Yeah. Lands are... Yes, the lands are colorless. That you make with Nissa and everything. Um, yeah, very good card here. So let's go with a B, a common cyborg card. All right, Rotting Regisaur, two B seven six. At the beginning of your upkeep, discard a card. What do y'all think of Rotting Regisaur? This one is sweet. I am I am looking forward to playing this card. This just looks like a fun card to play. Is this going to be like amazing? Maybe not. Like if you get to play it on turn two, you do have to start discarding your hand, and you know dies to every single removal spell ever. Like you know, like everybody says, you know, it dies to removal. Sure. Well, not I mean obviously not every removal spell ever, but you know dies to removal. Um. With bag of holding, yeah, I guess bag of holding. You discard cards and you put them in the bag to hold them for later. Um, yeah, Tyrant Scorns, Cast Downs, you're two for one in yourself. But poor Regisaur Alpha is now rotting. This is a pretty cool looking card. Good card to Command the Dreadhorde back, only cost three life for Command the Dreadhorde. I don't know, yeah, so that's kind of, that's kind of thing. Uh, yeah, definitely good against Red, <laughs> seven, six, on turn three. That's going to be a hard one for them to kill. Uh, yeah, pretty sweet card. So what are we getting? I'm kind of thinking this is a, I'm thinking this is like a C, a powerful card that could see play in some fringe decks. Seems like a really good C here for rot, Rotting Regisaur. Yeah, you can fling Rotting Regisaur, absolutely. It's a good card to fling. Um... Is this the kind of card that helps like mono black aggro? We got Rotting Regisaur, Knight of uh, Ebon Legion. We get enough for a mono black aggro deck? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Can yeah? Can we pair this in green black Stompy with the new Vivian? You know, can we you know just single black new Vivian's triple green? Give this thing trample. Make it plus one, plus one, and trample and stuff. Can we do that? Is this a is this the three drop that we want to bring back late game? To Cavalier of Night returns the three drop. Do we want to bring back a seven six? 
Is that like the card that makes Cavalier of Night more playable? I'm not sure. Those seem like some some fun things to kind of build and just kind of you know test out. You know, this is what this is what we're going to be doing here uh, for the next you know next couple of weeks. Like, let's try out some of these M20 cards, kind of put them together, see what happens. Um, yeah. All right, Sanitarium Skeleton, one mana, one, two. You can pay three to return it from your graveyard to your hand. This is not a card you want to be playing in standard. Let's give this the limited rating. All right, Scheming Cemetery. That was not even correct at all. <laughs> all right, let's try this again. How about Scheming Symmetry? Okay, that's probably what, that's probably what we want. Scheming symmetry. I was sorry, I was too focused on that art. That's a pretty sweet art. I like that. All right, one. So just a, a black sorcery. Uh, choose two target players. Each of them searches their library for a card. Shuffles their library. Puts that card on top of it. So I'm not expecting this card to see much play, to be honest. However, however. You could you could do some cool stuff with this. So it does it forces your opponent to search. So if they had uh scryed or surveilled something in the top, you force them to search. Of course they just put that card back on top though, so like that's not really that valuable. But um if you compare this with cards that mill your opponent, maybe you can do something there. There, yes, Ashiok says that opponents can't search, but it's, Ashiok is only like your opponent's cards can't let can't allow them to search, so it, it doesn't work like that. Like where you have Ashiok and then they can't search. Unfortunately, that combo doesn't doesn't work. However, yeah, I think I think if you have scheming symmetry plus make plus mill opponent, if we can put those together, so. If we have like Jace, or yeah, Ashiok still works with that. Like, yeah, I guess Ashiok still just mills the opponent plus exiles it, right? Like, yeah, like so they they go like let's say you have four mana, you play the scheming symmetry, and they go put they're like, oh cool, I'm gonna put this awesome card on top, and then you're like, all right, three mana Ashiok, mill your top four and exile them, and you just exile whatever card they just put on top. I don't know, it's just a cool little thing you can do. Same thing with like I was thinking like Jace. Uh, the four mana Jace that ticks up and mills two, um, you know, you have that. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, yeah, you could have Field of Ruin afterwards. You do this and then you Field of Ruin, but then what's the point? You have to exa you have to shuffle two a Field of Ruin. So no, that doesn't really work. Um, yeah, you could do this to yourself and then mill yourself with Jace and then bond and then bond a revival get a way to put stuff into the graveyard and that. Um, yeah, you could have Ashiok in play. You do this, and they, so then they just go put a bad card on top, and then you don't trigger Ashiok as a mind game. <laughs> so see, that you could do some pretty janky stuff with this. Uh, janky build-around card. That's a D. That's, that's what we got here. There's some cool janky stuff to do with this. If you do have little Teferi, you can play this instant speed, so you get the card first. That is true. Or, you know, if you just have any kind of card draw effect. If you have Tamio, you get to Scheming Symmetry, and then you Tamio tick up, and you name whatever card you put on top. So you make sure you, the, you definitely draw with Tamio. Kind of thing. Oh, that is it is nice with Bolas of Citadel. That is it is good with Bolas of Citadel. When you when you get Bolas of Citadel going, you hit the symmetry, you go go put your Wild Growth Walker on top or your Explore Creature on top. If you're combo you know, if you're just like comboing with Bolas of uh, Citadel, you go put Doom Whisper on top, so Doom Whisper can just reset your library like all the time. I could see this being played in a Bolas Citadel deck. For that kind of thing. All right. 
All right. It is a one mana tutor. Yeah. Yeah, one mana tutor. All right. So maybe maybe it's better maybe it's a little better than just janky build around card that I had D. So maybe D plus. D plus. No, I don't think this is a C. I don't think it's that good. But. All right, Sorcerer of the Fang. One in a black, one three, six mana to tap it, deal two damage to an opponent or a planeswalker. This is the definition of a limited card here. All right, we got Soren. Soren, Imperious Bloodlord. Two in a black, four loyalty. Target creature you control. Gains Death Touch and Life Link until end of turn. If it's a vampire, put a 1 1 counter on it. All right, so you're giving one of your creatures Death Touch and Life Link, and then vampires you're putting counters on. So, you know, definitely want to be playing this in a vampire deck. And we just talked about vampire getting a really good one drop a little bit ago with this knight. Uh, so, getting a really good three mana planeswalker, that's also that's another really big upgrade for vampires here. It also has another plus one. It has two different plus ones to go to five loyalty. You may sacrifice a vampire when you do. Then it deals three damage to any target, and you gain three life. So if you have extra vampire tokens or anything, sack them, deal three, gain three. That's that's nice. As we saw earlier, that's a four-mana card in the set. So, um, yeah, that's very nice. And then minus three, put any vampire creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Again, if you have like the more expensive vampires, there's like a the hmm, there's a, a three black black vampire from Ixalan. It's like something of dawn. It's not Cavalier of Dawn, but I don't know something like that. Champion, Champion of Dawn, Champion of Dusk, something like that. That you know draws cards. It's five mana ETBs. You draw a card and lose a life for every vampire you have. So you'll be able to play this and minus, put that into play, draw some cards. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of good ones. There's Vampire Sovereign, Champion of Dusk. There you go. Um, yeah, this is a sweet, sweet Planeswalker. This is a, this is a good Planeswalker. I'm glad, like, this is a, a well-designed Planeswalker. It's not something that's just going to, like, take over standard and you're just, like, so tired of seeing seeing soren all the time you know like a teferi kind of thing this is just a this is a well-designed planeswalker this is what planeswalker should really look like kind of thing um oh yeah other soren okay thanks storm uh the other soren whenever the other black the black white soren from war of the spark whenever you minus x it and return creatures from the graveyard to the battlefield those do turn into vampires and then this Soren can put counters on that on those vampires or sacrifice them again. So if you, yeah, if you can have some things with ETB effects like that, yeah. So this goes into exactly one one deck, but pushed, yeah, but really really helps that one deck. So with the grading scale, that's that's a B, a defining card in a singular highly played deck. Is this going to be a highly played deck? Maybe does seem like we're getting a lot of support for vampires um so maybe so let's let's give this a b a singular like that's that's what we have here yeah vampires may see a lot of play on arena honestly people yeah get that life gain in and everything um oh yeah gruesome menagerie is another kind of good card in like a for like this kind of deck also keep bringing your stuff back I like it. I like it. <laughs> turn one, Llanowar Elf. Turn two, Arcane Adaptation. Turn three, Sorin. Minus three puts a comma into play. Yeah, I guess you can do that. Um, Soul Salvage. Two a black sorcery return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. I don't know why you'd ever play this over find finality. 
that just costs two mana to do that. Even though that's black black, but still, no. Soul Salvage is getting the limited rating from me. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's why you'd play it, because you don't have wild cards. Okay, that makes that makes sense. Uh, thought Distortion, six mana sorcery, can't be countered. Reveal Target opponent reveals their hand. Exile all non-creature and non-land cards from that player's hand and graveyard. Hmm. So against... If you play this against Esper, you just get your creatures. That's it. Take your Command the Dread Horde, take all your Planeswalkers, take all your stuff, exile it. Now, of course, the things that are in play, those stay there. So if they have a Teferi beating you down, drawing lots of cards, you're not you're gonna be sad. Um six mana is just too much. If this cost four mana. You could you'd probably be playing this at four mana. Six mana is just too much. If it costs five, probably still not playing. We're probably not even playing this at five. Yeah, Persecute saw play. Yeah, Persecute seen play. It costs four with that. Yeah. All right, um, undead servant. Honestly, that that may be modern playable at four. It's true because like how like the exile, the graveyard, the hand, all that kind of stuff. All right, undead servant, uh, three and a B, three two. Whenever undead servant enters the battlefield, you make a two two black zombie creature token for each card named undead servant in your graveyard. Cool card, designed for limited, not for standard. Unholy indenture, two and a black, enchantment aura, enchant creature. Whenever enchantment creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under your control with a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Nope. Limited, better cards than that in standard that do the same kind of thing for like one mana instead of three. Vampire of the Dire Moon, black for a 1-1, one, one, Death Touch, Life Link. Okay, this being a vampire, of course, is very big. But, you know, Death Touch trades with, like, the green creatures if we're playing, like, a vampire deck with, like, our Sorens and stuff. Life Link can, you know, help us gain some life also. Um, maybe, maybe this fits in the vampire deck. I'm not sure if this is good enough, honestly. We already have that other good one drop that's going to be better. But this this could this could maybe see some this could be some uh, you know a very fringe card you know like a like one of your last cards that fit in the deck yeah the fact that it is a vampire is is definitely important for sure so let's go with a, a D here for vampire the dire moon we'll go with the D Would you rather play Vicious Conquistador? It depends. Like if you're struck, if you want a card that can get through big creatures, um, this can with that Death Touch, and you know it has Death Touch, Life Link. If you're playing like this Soren, you pump it up to be a two-two. You pump it up to be a three-three. You know, like that Life Link starts adding up and everything, and they gotta block it. And whenever they block it, their their creature dies. It does work very well with this Soren. So yeah, that's not not a bad one drop. I mean, you're gonna want one drops. Honestly, maybe it's better than a D. Maybe it's better than that. A card that's, hmm, yeah, maybe it's better than that. It really depends on how how good the vampire deck is for how good this card is. To be honest, we'll go D plus. Maybe I could see C minus. You know, if if the vampire deck is highly played, then it would be a C for here. Um, a card that is common, like a C is a card that is common in a highly played deck. So like if, if that's a highly played deck, and if this card is common in it, then that would be a C. So kind of see it, you know, I'm, I'm kind of hedging a little bit that maybe it won't be that. Eh, no, let's go C minus. All right. 
Ooh, yeah. Venerate Luxodon to have... Yeah, you want a lot of one-drops to get Venerate Luxodon in there too? Yeah, I mean, one-drops are just good. That's why we see, like, Mono White, Mono Blue. Like, those those decks play one-drops that when you look at them, you're like, oh, these, this card isn't that powerful, but just being one mana is really important. All right, we're going C-minus. Vengeful Warchief, four and a black for a 4-4. Four, four. Whenever you lose life for the first time on each turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Vengeful Warchief. No thank you. Limited. Vilis. Vilis. Broker of the of Blood. 5 BBB, 8-8 eight, eight Flyer. Pay black and 2 life. So target creature gets minus 1, minus 1 until end of turn. And whenever you lose life, you draw that many cards. If you're playing, if you're paying full price for this, if you're paying eight mana for this thing for an eight eight flyer, this is not going to be good. This is not going to be what you want. Like this is this costs too much mana. Basically, there's gonna be too many times where it's stuck in your hand and everything. So if you're trying to play a fair game with this card, uh, no. But this is the kind of card that you're going to want to play some kind of unfair game. You're going to want to cheat it in. Yeah, it's a card you reanimate. Uh, it's a card that you get into play some other way than just um, paying full price for it. So yeah, discard, reanimate, mill it over, reanimate, uh, something like that. There are some ways to do that. Um, so yeah, this does work really well with yeah, like with like Doom Whisperer. Yeah, works really well, Doom Whisperer. This, I mean, this is a, a pretty good card. Yeah, Thran Temporal Gate. Yeah, Thran Temporal Gateway. Get that into play. Um, yeah, push it in with Thran. That's good. Um, this card's pretty powerful if you can get it into play. It's just you're gonna have to jump through some hoops to get it into play, kind of thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with the D here, kind of the, the janky build around card, kind of thing. Uh, I don't expect it to really do too much in standard, but because uh, like if you do like you know jump through hoops, you get into play, and then they like you know to fairy bounce it, and you're like, Ugh, I have to try to figure out how to reanimate this thing again, you know, kind of thing. So yeah, it's some janky goodness here. All right, Yaro Yaroks Fen Lurker. BB11 one, one, horror whenever it enters the battlefield each opponent exiles a card from their hand and you pay 3 and it gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. Man, if this was a vampire. <laughs> but the 2 mana 1 1 enters the opponent exiles a card from their hand. That's good. That's good. Like you know, we have like the we have like the rat card 2 mana 1 1 ETB discard. Exile is definitely better than that. There's a way to like flicker this, keep bringing it back, have it die, get get these triggers multiple times or something. Um, anything like that. Um, yeah, sorry, I didn't I didn't notice that person there. <laughs> Yeah, I don't I don't have too many mods in my chat. I could always use more mods. Uh, if you'd like to be a mod, you just let me know. Like, there's only two mods in the channel right now besides me. Um, so I didn't notice that in time because I was looking at the card here. Um, but, uh, yeah, so Yarok's Fen Lurker. Um, double black. Double black is kind of the problem here, right? Um, cause like if it's just a black and a colorless as a one, one, um, then I, I would be a little bit more excited about this card. The one, one bodies, we talked about this earlier. Um, one, one bodies, they're really, they're really, they're really underpowered in general. Like they're, they're not very good. Uh, like it's so easy to just get through, like one, ones aren't attacking for very much. It's very easy to kill them. Um, so, you know, like this body isn't really doing very much for us. Now, with that being said, this isn't always a one, one, you can pump it up, but at three mana for, for each pump, 
that costs a whole lot of mana. Really, for this thing to be to be kind of good, I think you would want to be you'd want to be like a sacrifice deck where you want extra creatures to sacrifice. Um, so you know, any kind of any kind of sacrifice deck like an Orzhov sacrifice theme, they could be using this kind of card. But then it's also is this black black mana cost going to really be worth it? So um, there are some upside here for for some fringe decks. Um, yeah, I don't I don't love. Yeah, um, yeah. There's some upside here for fringe decks. Uh, don't love it being a one-one. Don't love it being black-black for the mana cost. But this could be something you play against. You know, this could be something that you that you kind of run into. Um, this could be something that pulls a deck together that you wouldn't otherwise think it would. Black has really bad two drops in standard right now. It's probably the color with the worst two drops in the format. I guess maybe blue. I guess blue has pretty bad two drops also. Um, so, you know, maybe this, this actually gets a little bit more play than you'd expect because of that. All right. Um, Villa's got a D for a janky build around card kind of thing. Here, I think I'm going to go with a, a D or maybe a D minus for the the Fen Lurker. We'll go with a we'll go with a D. I mean, if this was just discard from your hand, I would be less. I I would like it less. But the fact that you exile from your hand, I like it a little more because of that. Um. So, all right, we'll give it a D. So there is black. So. Uh, kind of going back through the color, the cards that got the best ratings. We had Soren get a B. We had Noxious Grasp. Sorry, I'm kind of I'm scrolling there, but yeah. So Soren was a B. Um, Noxious Grasp here was a B for a good cyborg card. Uh, Legion's End as a pretty good cyborg card was a B minus. Knight of the Ebon Legion looks to be a pretty solid card. Another B here. And uh, obviously, Duress is just a highly played cyborg card, so that one's a B. And then uh, Disfigure, uh, we also gave a B. So you can see here, it's my rating skill is pretty tough. Like getting A's is tough, honestly. And so B's are very good cards. Uh, yes, the spreadsheet you can you can find the spreadsheet here that has that they're all up to date. Um, for you there, so you can find you can find that there. Um, all right, so that is black. That is our third color um, that we have here for our core set 2020 set review. So if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you checked out white and blue. Also, those videos are up, uh, but. Um, we will go ahead and move on to our next color. So we're gonna be heading on over to red up next. We'll have red, then green, then all the multicolor artifacts and everything all together. So thank you so much for watching here and I will see you for the next color.